you ever feel like you hear all the buzzwords and all the right tools, but still struggle to bring it together in the right way? For example, automation, CICD, GitOps, Fleet. Well, you're not alone. Things in the cloud native space are complex, overwhelming, and there's usually more than one way of doing things. And that's definitely the case when trying to figure out something like an optimal CICD strategy. In this video, I'll show you one way of creating a complete CICD pipeline with the GitOps model. For the continuous integration step, I'll be using GitHub Actions. And for the continuous delivery step, I'll be using Rancher Fleet as my GitOps operator. And the goal of such an approach is to have complete automation in the process of testing your software, building container images, pushing the new versions to the relevant repository, updating the Helm charts or Kubernetes resources with the new container image tags, and finally, delivering the new software to your Kubernetes cluster. Let's start off by taking a closer look at this workflow. The entire workflow will typically start when a software developer has committed and pushed code to your application repository. And we're going to assume some method of approving and merging a pull request has been followed. And that's when the music starts. Your pipeline is going to kick off. The CI stage is responsible for testing the application and building the image. Once the image has been built, it will be pushed to my repository in Docker Hub. And now that we have a new application version, we need to update our Helm charts with this new tag. So in the CI stage, the GitHub repo with the Helm charts for the application will be cloned. After that, the relevant values file will be updated with the new image tag. And lastly, our GitOps tool will detect the difference between the source and the state of the downstream cluster and proceed to deploy the changes. Now let's talk about the example application so that you have better context. The example app consists of three microservices for a very basic mock e-commerce system. One GraphQL server that manages aggregating API requests to two other backends, orders and products. Let's switch over to the code and have a look at the different repositories in this workflow. So I have switched over to my code editor. And what you're seeing over here is the three different applications that I was speaking about, the GraphQL server, orders, and products. And we only need to work with one of them as an example to demonstrate this entire workflow. And uh, the main file that we'll be looking at is the main.yaml file, which will be the configuration uh, for our continuous integration stage. And so that lives inside of the .github and workflows folders. And GitHub Actions will be able to find this uh, to process what we set up. In addition to that, I have opened two other files, but we'll take a look at those later. And the reason we've done that is so that we can actually make some changes and commit those changes to trigger our pipeline. For starters, I want to walk you through the main.yaml file so you can see everything that I explained earlier and how that translates to um, configuration steps. And so as you can see at the top over here, I want this entire thing to be triggered when a push uh, takes place to the fleet branch. And so just so you're aware of that, in case you haven't worked with GitHub Actions before. And in addition to that, there will be some operations uh, taking place in the CI stage that will require some sensitive information, such as my Docker credentials. And even when I'm cloning another repository, I want to make use of a GitHub Access token in order for that to take place. And so these uh, secret values can be stored inside of the secret section of the settings for your GitHub repository. And then I am exposing them in the CI stage as environment variables so that they can be accessible for the different steps that I will be carrying out. So down here, I start off by installing the relevant dependencies for my application. As you can see, it is a Node.js application, and so I'm running the npm install command. And then I log into the Docker registry. Uh, my username and password are obviously provided by the secret values that are now available as environment variables. After that, I install YQ, which is an excellent tool for just uh, being able to transform your YAML configuration files. And I'll be making use of that later to update the values.yaml file inside of of the um, Helm Charts repository. And once I've installed the relevant dependencies and I've logged into my Docker registry, the next thing is to test my application to make sure it meets all of the quality checks. And so I run the npm run test command. And provided that passes, I can then proceed to build my Docker image. Now, the, the alternative approach would obviously be to build your Docker image and then run the tests in that approach as well. And that works perfectly fine. And I am getting the application version uh, from the package.json file of my application and storing that in an environment variable called container image tag. And uh, once I've done that, I build 
uh, the Docker image and I use that environment variable as the exact tag and then push it through to the Docker repository. And so now that I have a new um, image tag stored in my Docker repository, the next thing is to make sure that the repository that uh, Fleet is actually watching has the updated values and specifically the new version. So in order to do that, um, I'm storing the version inside of a of an environment variable just like I did before. But then I proceed to create a temporary folder where I clone um, this remote repository that contains the Helm charts and the values um, that Fleet is actually watching. And so I do that by cloning it and checking out of the Fleet branch, which is the one that is actually being watched. And I clone that into the temporary directory that I created. And then very important because I have other application Helm charts in there, such as the GraphQL one and the products one, this pipeline is specifically for orders. And so I CD into the relevant location. And just to make sure that I'm in, in the right place, I run the LS command. And then the next thing to do is to update the image tag uh, with this new container image tag uh, that I take from the environment variable. And as you can see, I'm running the YQ command over here and it will update the relevant value um, using this property deployment um, inside of the values.yaml file. And I'll show you what that file looks like just so that it helps consolidate all that I'm talking about. And so once I have updated um, the image tag with the new one, which will be 0.1.3 in this case, I CD back to the roots and then commit these changes and push them to the remote repository and the fleet branch to be um, specific. And so before we do that, I want to quickly show you what this Helm charts repository looks like. And as I mentioned, we've got GraphQL orders and products, but we're just concerned about orders because that's the pipeline that we're dealing with. And I've got a templates directory over here that contains all the templates for the diff uh, well, the templates for the different Kubernetes resources I'm working with in my application. Deployment is the one of our concern at this particular point. And so the values.yaml file which is located over here, as you can see, has um, an image tag. And so YQ was referring deployment and image tag. And so the remote repository um, will be updated with the new image tag based on the changes that take place in the continuous integration stage. And then another config file that is um, relevant in, in this case is the fleet.yaml file, which allows you to provide any additional configurations that you want fleet to be aware of for how it manages the continuous delivery steps. Uh, in my case, all of these are actually um, optional, and so they're not uh, necessary in order for my workflow to work um, in the way that I want it to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch back. And as I mentioned, I'm making some minor changes to my application. And so we've got this orders controllers.js file, and I've got an array here of orders in the uh, Sousa Rancher swag store that have been placed by different members of the Avengers. And I just recently added an order by Natasha Romanov for another product. And um, because I'm making a change, I've also bumped the version to 0.1.3. And so what I need to do next is CD to orders. Right, and that change should trigger our pipeline, and you can see over there. Great, and so our CI stage passed successfully, and so I'm gonna just open up this update image tag in Helm, get repo step, and scroll right down to the bottom, and you can see the different things that we defined. And so that means that the values file inside of our Helm chart repo should be updated, specifically for orders. So I'm going to click on orders over here, and well, I believe I'm in the wrong branch. I'm gonna to change to the correct branch, which is fleet. And as you can see, this was updated 34 seconds ago. So if I click on values.yaml, and we can see now we've got the correct uh, new image tag 0.1.3. So if I head over to Rancher, 
And as you can see, we've caught it right when it's in progress. So um, Fleet has a default polling duration of 15 seconds. So right now it is actually in the middle of deploying that and we see that it has completed it. So if I come over to the orders deployment and click on that, and you'll see that now we've got the new version running 0.1.3. So I'm going to go over to the load balancer for my application, which is the GraphQL application. And you can see over here. And so I've got a query that is just going to fetch all of the orders. So I'm just going to click on that. So we see we've got an order for Peter Parker, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, and we should see a last one right at the bottom, Natasha Romanoff ordering the Longhorn t-shirt. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope that was helpful. Be sure to join the SUSE and Rancher Community Network and engage with other cloud native practitioners and make the most of our resources to help you on your cloud native journey.